It is so smoky outside. I mean, it's it's very cinematic, so I don't want to complain too much. Just got this vintage tea. I got it from Grilled. A lot of people ask me. It's just like a American Thunder tea. About to go hoop. It's like my favorite t-shirt to hoop in. I'm really weird when it comes to like apparel I wear when I play basketball. All jokes aside, this smoke is no joke. And I'm running late, so I'm about to hop in an Uber. Alright, so I just pulled up to the hoop session. Was in so much traffic. The biggest dilemma in New York is do I pay $2 for a subway that could be 40 minutes? Or do I pay $25 for a 20 minute Uber? Why not? Sometimes you just gotta splurge for the convenience and peace of mind. Like crazy, look at this shirt. Oh, that's unacceptable. But the hoop session, um, yeah, it's my first time filming. We play basketball. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So for context, I recently switched from being a developer evangelist to a developer advocate. My primary focus has been the ownership of our dev phone. The Twilio dev phone makes it a lot easier for you to test your Twilio applications, especially when you don't have reliable or easy access to SMS and calling capabilities. It uses Twilio products to send and receive calls and SMS from your local dev environment. So essentially, let's say you're doing a demo and you're using our APIs to show some sort of like communications application. And let's say you don't have reliable service, you could use a dev phone instead of your cell phone. There's a few things that I've noticed since starting to program full time again. One, imposter syndrome started to bubble up because I felt that I should have completed stories faster. I've been relearning React. After being somewhat experienced, it was a challenge because I felt like there were a lot of concepts and React fundamentals like programming that I should have known. I also had to remind myself to be kind and have grace and to just trust the process that over time I'll get into a rhythm. So I bet you're wondering how AI fits into what I code in a day. Let me explain. So we wanted to make our text input in our form for our application to grow with the content inside of it. And oddly enough, HTML inputs don't like by default grow with the content inside of it, which is just so weird considering that that will be such a common use case. I also noticed that a lot of examples weren't very straightforward and the vanilla JavaScript examples don't directly correlate to React. So honestly, I figured why not just ask ChatGPT? It seems like a pretty easy question for AI to answer and it also would save me a lot of time, which is something really viable as really the main person maintaining this code base, at least the UI for the app. So all I did was ask ChatGPT how I can create a text input that grows dynamically and voila, it responded with a solution in seconds with an explanation. So I implemented ChatGPT's solution into a skeleton app to make sure a basic example would work. Then I implemented it into our app. I didn't stop there. My recommendation is after you get an answer from ChatGPT, or even like an answer you found on the internet is to try to figure out other ways of implementing it or just like simply watching a YouTube video. And for me, that was extremely helpful because I really wasn't sure what ChatGPT was doing. And I also want to make sure that I'm able to explain the code that I'm implementing and if it even makes sense. Using AI has saved me a significant amount of time, which is one of its major benefits. It allows me to be a more efficient programmer as a main person working on this product and working efficiently is crucial. Nonetheless, this was really just a 
a learning experience and we didn't even use a chat GBT answer as like our final solution. We end up like removing our custom text input altogether for the chat composer, which is a component built inside our paste UI library framework. That's really powerful and dynamic and gives us all the features we need and some. So I figured why not come up here, answer a couple questions in the ask me anything I posted on my Instagram story way too long ago. First question is from underscore Nick Campos, basically asking me how can I describe my journey in tech? So my journey in tech, I feel like was pretty traditional from like an educational standpoint, majored in computer science, graduated with a computer science degree, and got a full stack software development job as my first job. But I feel like my path to where I am now went is like not very linear. I meet a lot of people that jumped right into big tech, jumped right into like a fame company and that just wasn't me. Or just jumped right into like some sort of tech company. I joined a tech company, but it was a small business to business tech company as a full stack dev. Then I realized I wanted to be a front end dev and that they didn't have those type of job opportunities at that company. So I transitioned to be a front end web dev. I really enjoyed it. The problem was being a front end web dev in digital marketing. I was doing a lot of programming and just like kind of mundane work, tedious work that didn't really help me elevate my skills as an engineer. So that's why I transitioned from that role to another role as a front-end software engineer. And I really did enjoy that role. It's just that I've always wanted to work for like a Silicon Valley based tech company. And I also realized that my skill sets are beyond just being a programmer. My passions go beyond being a programmer. That's how I found out about developer evangelism and advocacy, which is what I'm doing right now where I can make content and also do development. Next question is, from Daniel LXES, but what's your best tip for studying? So I definitely wanted to answer this question because I think this is a really viable for those of you all who are studying computer science, software engineering, or something technical. My main tip is to not study on your own. My first two years, I remember I would study on my own. I didn't have a study group. And not only did I fail my first like course, computer science course, but I also really struggled and got really burnt out. So my recommendation is to find a good group of peers, especially peers who are smarter than you, that you can learn from and that you guys can help each other, especially when you're studying for exams. One person studies this concept, another person studies this other concept. You come together at the end of the study session, at the middle of the study session, and talk about the things that you all have learned or become kind of like a mini expert in. And it also just makes learning so much more fun. This question is from HTTP underscore DVNZT. I can't pronounce any of these names. I don't even know if they're pronounceable. What keeps you motivated in general? I was never the smartest person. I was never the most talented. I always felt like I had to work extremely hard to even be like a B to B plus student. Also growing up, my mom worked so hard for us. My mom had two jobs like most of my life. So I just grew up seeing like hard work. And for me, like it goes beyond just being like motivated. At this point, it's just dedication. One, not only to my audience because I need to push out content for you guys because I wouldn't be here without you all and I like providing value, but also dedication to myself and having something that I can say, hey, I was successful at this because I was consistent at it. So really consistency and just dedication. Obviously like brand opportunities make me really inspired and really motivated. But what gives me the most joy is like bumping into subscribers or people a part of my audience in person and, and them saying like, hey, I really enjoyed your content, keep it up. Or someone in a comment section saying, hey, I started watching your videos X amount of years ago and I just landed a new job. Like that's what really motivates me because it's all about you all. And my dad also made sure that I could not BS and I cannot slack. He made sure he pushed me academically and athletically and I'm forever grateful for him. So it was really the combination of seeing my mom work multiple jobs, you know, my dad making sure I don't BS as a student athlete, and then also understanding that I'm not the smartest person in the room. I haven't ever been and I know I won't ever will be and that's really where the motivation comes from. So that pretty much wraps up this video and getting out of my comfort zone and asking AI to help me with programming 
has really helped me like jump over that barrier of entry to getting more comfortable with using AI to help me become a more productive software engineer. And obviously as like a content creator who also enjoys working on side projects, I'm gonna be using AI a ton, especially for those like edge, like CSS use cases. And at the end of the day, I've been using it as a tool to help propel me to whatever finish line I'm looking to pass. With that said, that concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below some ways you guys have been using AI. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It helps out with the algorithm. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can know right away when I release videos. I'll see you all soon. Peace.